What's up guys, my name is Josh. First of all, uh, good morning. It's so very, very early for me. It's 6.42 and I've already edited an entire video. So that's pretty fun. Uh, I wanna talk about audio and the audio industry from an outsider's perspective. And uh, I've talked about this a few times before, but I also kinda of wanna talk about how I got into being um, an, an audio file. <laughs> hate that word still. An audio purist, let's call it. I haven't been into audio for that long. To be completely honest, I think, uh, I think by now it's been three years, three, maybe four years, uh, three and a half, at, probably about three and a half at most. And uh, I still remember vividly getting into audio and like the world of it kind of just blowing up and uh, not in terms of its popularity, just my awareness of it. And here's how I kind of viewed the audio world before. I think part of the reason why it's such a small community is because what's considered a good headphone by the general population is not a good headphone. A good example here is I was always into tech, right? I was, I was into computers. We were building, uh, me and my roommate were building our computers, stuff like that. And so I was aware of kind of common um, computer brands like Razer and Logitech and things like that. So naturally when a Razer headphone came out, I was like, oh, that clearly is, you know, it, it's a well-known tech headphone, right? Everybody says it's good, everybody who reviews it, and it must be good. So the headphone that I bought before I got into audio, and I'm, I'm not lying, please don't kill me, it was a Razer Kraken. It was a horrible headphone. I liked it at the time because I thought, oh, more bass means a better headphone. You know, more bass, more bass, more bass. Uh, I didn't ca care about balance or or quality or mid-range or highs or uh, you know a, a decent sound stage and decent imaging anyways that part's not important but I, I want to talk about the the industry as of right now because a big part of why it's so small is because outside of being in it it's like once you're in it you can't escape it because your feed fills up with all these these videos about other you know reviewers talking about headphones or uh, you know advertisements are promoting you headphones so like once you're in it you're in it basically but outside of that nobody talks about it it's it's so unknown like cars you know the car world that's unavoidable and you're gonna get like cars no matter you know what your interests are because you you drive past them every day they're a part of a lot of people's lives and it's a much bigger industry but with audio but with audio people don't know and uh, uh it, I mean, it kind of sucks, but it is also fun to like uh, go over to a uh, you know friend's house with a nice pair of headphones and like a, a nice audio file pair of headphones and put them on their heads and just watch them light up and they're like, oh, holy crap! Like this sounds incredible and incredibly clear and large and and just like a delivery that most people aren't used to. Um, but before I was into this, like I was heavily into technology, like heavily, heavily, like I built my own computer. Um, you know, I've, I've just always been into tech. Um, at the time I was really going on like a gaming mouse kick, but speaking of gaming mouse, I, I know I said I was gonna review them, but I, I kind of thought about, and sorry, I'm going off on a tangent here. And I'm currently using the, uh, the five, or I'm sorry, this is the 603 here. Great little mouse, fantastic. But this mouse and the 305 have made me realize that at this point, there is no, like, there's not much for the industry to do other than just put a few more features here and there. So the only thing I'm going to really be distinguishing in a mouse review is going to be, you know, hands shape and size. It's just going to be like, oh, does it fit your hand? And that's really going to be almost impossible for me to know because um, everybody's hand is a little bit different. So it's going to be a little like, just try it and see if it works. Because the big hurdle before with mice was getting it wireless. And the G900 did a pretty good job, but um, in terms of, like, I couldn't tell any delay, but I noticed it in gameplay. Not the delay, I just noticed that I wasn't quite as accurate. And uh, with this and the 305, which are drastically different shapes regarding the sensor's ability to keep up, this is indistinguishable from a wired mouse a wired mouse so at this point like we've exceeded the technology that we were chasing after and the only thing we can do is add battery life add features or buttons but you know not everybody wants that not everybody cares and so we're we're in this weird spot where it's like there's very little to improve upon anymore 
It, really, there is. Anyway, so I, I don't think I'm gonna jump down the rabbit hole anymore of gaming mice because I was I was really trying to figure out a way to do it differently than uh, you know Rocket Jump Ninja, who does it the best in my opinion, where he just lists off specs, takes measurements, and that's every single video. And outside of that, there really isn't anything to do anymore with gaming mice. I mean, you're not getting these huge improvements year to year in wireless like you were, um, like when the uh, the what was it the Ouroboros from Razer came out like that was kind of a big jump in wireless and then Logitech had their their jump and then Razer had their jump and then Logitech was just like all right screw you and just jumped way ahead and is still ahead because Razer's technology is nowhere near the hero sensor that's in there but uh complete non non sequitur there sorry about that but when you're outside of the audio industry there is no audio industry there is the music industry and that's it you know maybe you're into a pair of speakers but then you know where do you go like you don't go to a hi-fi store because there are basically none uh you go to a best buy what does best buy have samsung sound bars and bose and klipsch speakers and that's not really a great example of of you know the the audio file industry so from an outside perspective, from what I can remember, it's literally non-existent. So I'm not sure how to quite transition people or if we should keep it tight knit. I mean, sometimes what makes a community so great is being able to be that tight. But I also feel like more people in the industry breeds more money. Money comes with people. And when there's money to be had and money to be made, uh, innovation happens because people need to stay ahead of the game, stay ahead of the competition, and when you breed innovation, everybody benefits. So maybe from a purely technological standpoint of trying to, to further the technology, bringing more people in is a good thing. Um, but then pretty much with every industry, like if it gets too big, it's kind of ruined. Like there, there's no more, there, there's no special feeling to, to things anymore after that. Um, you know, like the, the gaming community is just toxic. So, so toxic. Um, and you know, so are some parts of the audio industry, no doubt. I mean, I'm not saying that at all, but uh, I think we, you know, you and I have a pretty good little pocket here where, you know, we've kind of strayed away from that stuff. And I think part of that's the way that I've structured this channel. And then I think another part of that is just, you know, just not falling into into some of that stuff myself um, and then you know people like like-minded people so you know any pretty much a lot of people who think like I do and approach things the way I do subscribe to the channel or you know obviously it's not a binary thing it's a spectrum you may think a little bit like me or a lot like me um, but it's very interesting um, and so <laughs> how this got me into audio my, my grandmother passed away and uh, she left me like a little bit of money. It wasn't, it wasn't like a lot. It wasn't enough to buy a car or down payment on her house or anything like that. But it was like, you know, a couple grand basically. Um, and so I, <laughs> I was just doing what people do when they get money and they're young. And I was like 18 or 19 years old. And I bought a pair of HD 800s because they were the best headphones that you could buy. And uh, I saw, <laughs> I swear to God, as, as shitty as it sounds, it's true. I saw an Unbox Therapy video on it. And uh, I was just like, oh, well, that's the best you can buy. I'm going to go buy it. So I bought that. I bought a shit stack. And uh, when it arrived, I hated it. And I sent it right the fuck back. <laughs> because I just, it was so bad. It was so horrible. Oh, my God. I just did not like it at all. Um, and, and maybe I might like it a little bit more now because I can, I, I might be able to at least respect the signature. Um, but going from being a bass head to a headphone that's anorexic when it comes to bass comparatively to what I was listening before is, uh, it, it was, it was a shock. And I was like, this, this is the best that, that we have to offer here. Come on guys. Um, and then Fast forward, I don't know what happened in between that and like six months later, um, I think I just happened to be looking at headphones again um, because like my pair broke or uh, wasn't comfortable, was whatever reason. And I just happened to come across a video talking about uh, 
um, headphones, then I watched another and then another, and it was YouTube culture basically that got me into it. And then I ended up settling on a pair of HT 600s and I can't remember why. I think Z may have played a part, but I can't exactly uh, pin down that, that narrowly as to who got me into it specifically, but it was one of the, the audio reviewers. They, and then, I don't know, something happened. And so I ended up buying a pair of HD 600s and I just love those things to death. They are still my favorite uh, headphones. In fact, I'm considering buying either those, the 6XXs or the uh, 660s because that sound signature just sounds so good to me. Um, and then it was just downhill from there and my wallet has never forgiven me. <laughs> <laughs> and it's been like three, two, two and a half, three and a half years, somewhere on there. Um, it hasn't been too long, but uh, it's been an interesting journey. So that's how the audio industry seems to outside people or doesn't seem to outside people because nobody's aware of it. Um, even now, I don't think I've ever met and talked to a person in real life that I, like I didn't, it, it's like I've never talked to a person that I didn't meet over the internet about audio. Like all of my audio friends, everyone I have ever met has been through through YouTube, basically. It's just me creating the channel, people commenting, people hitting me up on Discord, Twitter. I have a Twitter, by the way, I never use it, but I do have it. You should uh, hit me up down there. Uh, you know, Instagram, stuff like that. Like everybody who showed up has showed up from the internet, <laughs> just random strangers from the internet. But I've never, ever talked to a person in real life that, was into audio ever. So like we are few and far between. And uh, it's, it's very interesting. And, and maybe some of you are more fortunate to have some friends who were already in it and maybe that's how it got you into it. Um, but if you guys have stories about how you got into it, I'd love to hear them in the comment section down below. Uh, I think that's gonna wrap it up for this Let's Talk, even though it was quite a bit longer and quite a bit uh, not as well scripted as maybe some of my videos are. I'm gonna drink this coffee and uh, get back to work, so. Catch you guys later.